I want to preach a little bit this morning and maybe the next few weeks about faith. How many people here have faith? Faith. Faith. Uh, You know, you can believe stuff but not have faith in it. You can believe stuff and not have faith in it. I want to talk this morning a little bit about faith. What faith is and what you do with it and what it does with you. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 11, we all have read this so many times before. We're going to read this and we're going to back up a few verses into chapter 10. But in Hebrews chapter 11, it says this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of of things not seen. Now, you know, we have faith. We believe in a God that we have never seen. I've never, I've never seen God face to face. Don't know if I could stand seeing God face to face. Don't know that. But we've never seen Him yet. I believe He's there. I believe He's there. I wasn't there 2,000 years ago when Jesus hung on the cross. I didn't see His blood shed. I didn't see it with my eye. But I know he did it because of what, the God, uh, what, of what God's word says. And I believe that what he did was sufficient to make me acceptable in God's sight. That's my faith. That's what I believe. That's the body of, that's the body of belief that we adhere to. But faith is more than that. Faith is more than that. It's substance... And it's evidence. Okay, now substance, what sub, sub, is stuff you, you can touch. That's, I can see this. I know this is there because I can feel it. I can see it, you know. And, and substance, if, if you look that word up and you, and you do a study in the Greek, it actually deals with a foundation. It deals with uh, an assurance, a good foundation, something you can touch and feel, something that's there. You know, even though we can't see God, we know, we know He's there. We can touch it, we can feel it. It's substance of things hoped for. Now, if you're hoping for something, what well, that means it hasn't happened yet, right? How many people are hoping here for the coming, the second coming of Jesus Christ? I'm hoping for it. That word hope in the Bible, it's not like an uncertainty, like I hope it happens. It's, it's a knowing that it's going to happen. So we're waiting for Christ to come back. We haven't seen it. We don't know what it looks like. We can read about it. But we know it's happening because our faith gives us something to hold on to. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence or the proof of things not seen. I was down in Westmoreland County the other night, and I was, I was reading this scripture. And I said, when I said evidence, they all knew what evidence was. You know, Westmoreland County Jail. It's proof. It's, you know, in, in a trial, here's, uh, you know, evidence. They'll say, uh, uh or uh, you know, first uh, item of evidence, you know, number one is here, and they would they would show it's proof that things have happened. At faith, even though we have faith in something that we can't see, is something we can hold on to. It should be something we can hold on to. I want I want you to back up just a little bit in chapter ten, and we're just going to read here a little bit, and then we're going to we're going to go a few other places. In verse thirty-eight, and we're just going to read the last two verses of chapter ten in Hebrews. It says this, Now the just shall live by faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We live our lives with an expectation of something that's yet to come. And please, just dismiss all the thoughts about cars and boats and money. It's not that. Some people have made it that. You know, it's about stuff. It's not about that stuff. It's about God's stuff. Okay? He says, The just shall live by faith, But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back under perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. The Apostle Paul here, if he is the author of this letter, which I believe he is, he's he's designating us and them. Us and them. And the us and them isn't, you know, Pentecostals and Methodists, okay? It's not that. 
The us and them is us who are walking and living by faith and them who have drawn back. Who maybe at one time had faith, who maybe at one time thought there was a God, who maybe at one time thought there was something they could look forward to, but now they have drawn back. They have decided that that's not the, the way for them. You know, it's like that in churches. And all of us, many of us have been in many different churches. You've got folks sometimes, and I've, I've, I've seen this happen. There's some folks that will come into church after about two days, and they'll say, man, I'm ready. sign me up. I want to join. I want to be, you know, I want to speak some Sunday night. I want to, I want to be on the worship team. I want to you know, be in that church. I want to, I want to count the money. <laughs> See, I always, I always tell folks, you know, and some of the folks uh, said, you, you need to know the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know what I'm saying? Every church got that? Every church got the good, and bad, and the ugly. And that's just the way it is. I don't care where it is. You need to find out before you jump in, okay? But, but we've all known folks that, man, after two, three days, they're ready to sign up. They're ready to join about three weeks later. They're gone. What happened? Whatever happened to someone? I don't know. Okay. See, we're not of them that draw back. But we're of them that live by faith. So there's us and them. And then he, sa- he goes on in chapter 11. And we're, today we're not going to do chapter 11, but we're going to. He says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith should have substance and evidence. If you have true saving faith, there ought to be something in your life that people could grab a hold on or can look at and say, there's proof that that person is truly saved. Now, I'm not saying you have to do things right to make God accept you, but I'm saying it is a natural progression. You get saved, you receive God, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell inside of you. There's got to be some kind of change in your life. Anybody, you all agree with me? You can't go on. Living the life you're living, if God comes and dwells inside of you, man, he's going he's to shake you up about something. Okay? Now, I want you to turn with me over to the book of Romans. And we're going to, we're going to read chapter 11 in, in, you know, maybe next week. But I want you to turn to Romans, uh, the book of Romans, chapter 4, and then we're going to go back up again, again into chapter 3. Uh, so actually, Romans chapter 3. And start, starting with, uh, we'll start with verse 23. Okay, check this out. It says here, the Apostle Paul says, For all, can you say all? All All have what? Sin. Sin. Well, I guess you and me are included in all, isn't it? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay. Being justified freely by His grace... Through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. That's a big word. It means it's the same word as the word mercy seat. Jesus Christ is our mercy seat. Okay? Through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. What he's saying, that's a big long sentence. And what he says is this. I'm, I'm, I'm a lost sinner. I can't do anything to save myself. I can't make myself righteous in God's sight. I can't do anything to make God accept me into his kingdom. I can't do anything. All all I can do is put my faith in what God has done for me. Jesus Christ has shed his blood so that God could accept me. Okay? He goes on and he says this in verse 26. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him, which what? Believes in Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus this morning? Do you have faith? In Je- you might believe that Jesus lived. You might believe that Jesus was a guy that lived 2,000 years ago. But do you have faith in what he did on the cross to cover your sins? Remember a couple weeks ago we talked about how God had to kill an animal to put a skin over Adam and Eve, a bloody skin, so that they would be covered? Well, Jesus Christ shed his blood that we could be covered. 
Do you believe that this morning? That's what makes us believers. That's what makes us part of the body of Christ. We have faith in what He did. Listen to what He said. Verse 27. Where is boasting then? Well, man, I'm saved. Can you boast about your salvation? Can you boast about all the good things God has done for you or what you've done and, well, I got saved and I got a minister's license and now I pastor me a church and I, you know. Where's boasting? What do we, what business do we have bragging about what God has done for us? I mean, we brag on Him, but not on ourselves. He says, it's excluded by what law? Of works? No, but by the law of what? Faith. What we believe. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified or accepted. Whenever you see that word justified, think accepted by God. Accepted by God. For a man is justified or accepted by God by faith without the deeds of the law. That means we don't have to go back to the, to the Old Testament law and read all those, all those uh, offerings and sacrifices and things that, that are there and all those commandments. We don't, th- that doesn't save us. You know, uh, I said before a few weeks ago, the Ten Commandments are there. Uh, they don't save us. Can't save us. Because without Christ living in me, as I said, I couldn't do a single one of them. And neither could you. Okay? So the law can't do anything. We can't, we can't get, have God accept us by being right because we can't be right. Now listen. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Verse 29. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. It's for everybody, not just Jews. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid we establish the law. By what we believe and by what we, what we believe Jesus did, we are verifying and establishing what God said is right and wrong. Because we, remember we said before the law was written in our heart. Okay, now that, I just read all that to get up to chapter 4. The Apostle Paul, when he wanted to explain saving faith, who did he use as, as an example? He didn't use Peter. He didn't use John or James. But he says, what shall we say then that Abraham, Abraham, all the way back in the book of Genesis, what should we say about Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh has found? What did Abraham find out about this? It says, for if Abraham were justified by works, he had whereof to glory, but not before God. What's he saying? If anybody could brag about what they did, it could be Abraham. God told Abraham to leave his city, go to a land he had never been to. He told him, he said, uh, uh, you're going to have you're going to have children, and you're going to a nation is in your loins, and there's going to be more of them than there is uh, sand in the, on on the beach or stars in the sky. Abram believed what he said, even though his wife was barren. When he finally did have a son, his only son, God told him to take him on up on top of a mountain to offer him. And Abraham, without argument or, or without tarrying, he did exactly what God told him to. Because it says over in Hebrews, and we're going to read it next week, that Abraham believed that God could raise him from the dead. So if a- anybody could boast about, about anything, Abraham could because he did, he did what God told him to. And he made a few mistakes in this time too. But he was obedient to God. It says, if anybody could glory in the flesh, Abraham could. But not before God. See, get, I, I hope you all get that. Because we're going to read another scripture here. A lot of people like to use to try to make you think that, you know, the thing's mixed up. But, you see, Abraham, he did things, and people saw, and we read about what he did. And he, and he is uh, presented as, one of the, as the father of the faithful because he believed God. And his belief, his, the substance and evidence of his belief was his obedience. So if Abraham, he could have boasted about what he did, but not, not to God. He could have said, you know, hey, here's my faith but not to God. He says, For if Abraham, look at verse 2, For if Abraham were justified by works, he had whereof to glory, but not before God. For what says the Scripture? This goes back to Genesis chapter 15. Abraham, what? Believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He believed God, and it made him righteous. He had faith, and he was seen as being righteous. 
God accepted him. He accepted him because of his faith. That was before, if you read that in Genesis chapter 15, that was before he offered his son on Mount Moriah. That was before he did all those things. He just believed what God had to say. And God said, I accept you, Abram. Okay? He goes on and he says this. Verse 4. Now to him that works is the, roar, is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that works not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now I want to ask you something. How many of you here would have identified yourself as ungodly? I hope his hand is coming. Without the Lord? Without, without caring about what God thinks? I was ungodly. I thank God. You know, you ought to put your hands up because that's who he died for. <laughs> if you're not ungodly, maybe he didn't die for you. Okay? He says here, Not to him that works is the reward reckoned not of grace but of debt. But to him that works not but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputes righteousness without works. Quoting from the 32nd Psalm, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven or whose sins are covered. Are your, are your sins forgiven today? Are they forgiven because you got baptized one day? Are they forgiven because maybe you stood up in front of a church and said, I join? They're forgiven because of the blood of Jesus. You're accepted in the beloved by the blood of Jesus. They're not forgiven because you come to church every time the doors open. They're not forgiven because you put money in the box. They're forgiven because of your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. I'm blessed because when God's going to look at me, He's not going to see me as a sinner. But He sees me covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, saved by faith, all right? Saved by faith. Not of works. It says in Ephesians, not of works lest any man should boast. Right? Praise the Lord. Now, turn with me over to James. To James. And some of you Bible scholars know what I'm talking about. See, some folks will look at this passage of Scripture and say, you see? You see? There's, there's, you see? The Bible, you can't depend. But I want you to read this. Look at James chapter 2. Ah. Uh, And we'll start with verse 14. Read this with me. James writes, What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked or destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? That's why if I say, Hey, I have faith, praise the Lord, I'm a man of God, and somebody comes to me and says, You know, I don't have any food on my table, and I say, I'll pray for you, brother. And I don't hand them a voucher to go down to the shop and save or give them some food or something. We'll be praying for you. Okay. It's a quiet one this morning. Huh? Okay. L look what it says. It says in verse uh, 17. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. Faith, if it has not works. Wait a minute. I'm saved by faith. I'm not saved by works, am I? No, I can't be saved by works. But if I have faith, if I have real faith in Jesus, you know what? It ought to manifest itself in something in my life. He says, A man may say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Just like Abraham. See, some folks will read this and say, well, that's, that's a, a contradiction of what we read in Romans. No, it's not. It's saying exactly the same thing. Abraham, Abraham could have boasted about what he had to do in front of men. He could have said, look, look I've lived my life. I'm a friend of God. His, his works spoke for themselves to everybody who would hear about it. If I say I have faith 
If I say I've been born again, if I say I'm a new creature in Christ, if I say I've been called to ministry and I can't act like Jesus wants me to act out, out there, what, what good is my faith? There are more people who have been turned away from the church by folks who said they were saved and wasn't. Or at least didn't act like it. I should, I should have preached something else this morning. All right. Look, it says... It says in verse 19, You believe that there is one God? How many people believe there is one God? You know, most people I talk to, I say, You believe there is a God? They say, Oh, well, there's, there's, there's a God. Most people aren't atheists. Atheists make a lot of noise. But almost everybody believes in some kind of God. Some people even believe in Jesus. They believe that Jesus was there. Some people even believe in the God of the Bible. It says, You believe, in, you believe that there is one God? Good for you. You know what? Demons believe. They know. They've seen him firsthand. They believe. And they tremble at the mention of his name because they know the name of God means their eternal damnation. See, they, they believe. Yeah, that's good. You believe. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Now listen, this is what we're talking about. Substance and evidence. Okay? And we're going to go back and look in Hebrews chapter 11 later next week. And see about some of the substance and evidence that the, that the elders had. Okay, here's what he says. Who does he use as an example? Abraham. The same guy that Paul used. He says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? He proved it. His faith was proved. It was demonstrated when he was willing to offer his son. It says in Hebrews, Because he knew that God could raise him from the dead. He had faith. That was an, that was an act of faith. Sometimes faith will have you do something that seems crazy. You better make sure it's faith. <laughs> okay. He said he was justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son. Seest how faith wrought with his works, and by his works was faith made perfect. Do you understand? And this is the message when we talk about faith, and we talk about substance, and we talk about evidence. We're talking about what faith ought to do in our lives. What faith ought to do when we become a believer and we start following Jesus? He's our Lord and Savior. We got the t-shirt. We got the stuff on our car. You know, the little fish. I can never figure out that fish thing anyway. The little fish. Driving around. I've said it before. If you're going to put that fish on your car, you better watch how you act when somebody cuts you off. Or when somebody doesn't go through the yellow light and you want to go, you know. It's evidence. He says, just reading a little bit more, and we're going to close. He says, verse 23, And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for the same thing that Paul said in Romans. It was counted to him, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. His faith saved him. He was saved by faith, and his saving faith wrought in him the works of obedience that were the substance and evidence of his faith. You see then how that by works a man is justified, not by faith only. You see, saints, when we're talking about faith, it's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We're talking about the changed lives of believers. The changed lives. When I got saved, God changed my life. How many can put their hands up and say, when I got saved, God changed my life life. It might not have happened overnight. You might not have experienced that change overnight, but when, when I got saved, God did a work in me. I don't think like the world thinks. Some, some folks get saved when they're very young. They don't even remember before they're saved, yet their life is different than what the world says it ought to be. It's different. We don't get plugged into the mold the world tries to plug us into. We don't allow the world to conform us to its image. But we allow our minds to be transformed by the renewing, by the washing of the water of God's word. Why? Because we have faith and we believe what it says. It says back here in Hebrews, By faith the elders obtained a good report. 
I want to have a good report. I want to have a good report. And every one of those elders that we're going to read about probably next week, unless something changes. Every one of them. None of them was a perfect human being. None of them was... But every one of them believed God. And every one of them had a testimony. A testimony of their faith. I want to ask you this morning, do you have a testimony? Do you have a testimony? Some of us got saved when we were older. Some got saved when we were very young. Some of us got saved through dramatic, you know, earth-shaking events, and some of us just, just came up in the Lord. The blood of Jesus is the blood of Jesus. Old or young, rich or poor, white or black, it doesn't matter. Are you born again? Are you saved this morning? If you are, have you allowed your faith to manifest itself with substance and evidence in your life? Because, see, that's the bottom line. We come here on a Sunday morning to worship God, to hear from His Word, but it's all for the purpose of getting us ready for out there. It's all for the purpose. Because somewhere, somewhere down the line, some, somewhere this week, you're going to run into somebody that's going to need to hear and see your faith. Amen? Amen? If you care about what God thinks. Somewhere down the line, it might be in a grocery store line, it might be in a checkout, it could be anywhere. Somewhere, somewhere this week, you're going to run into somebody that's going to need uh, to see and hear the faith that you have in God. The substance and the evidence of what you believe. So I can't take anybody to a place and say, look, there's God. I can't see Him in the flesh. We could point to all of nature and say, look at nature. Look at God. Look what God has done. We could, we could do that. It's sort of like the wind. Jesus said when the wind blows, you know, you can't see the wind when it's blown, but you can sure see what it does. I want to challenge you this morning. Build the body of Christ. Be filled with the Spirit. Let your faith be manifested in substance and evidence. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's a challenge. Sometimes, sometimes, listen, sometimes you get weary. You, get, you ever get weary of standing? You ever get weary, weary of standing in faith? Sometimes you just get beat down so bad. Sometimes it seems like a tidal wave comes all at once. And you, and you stand there saying, what in the world? But see, that's where faith, there's a song that Sister Donna sings. That's where faith is put to the test. The God on the mountain, he's the God in the valley. The God when things is going right is the same God when things is going wrong. And the blood of Jesus that covered you when you first got saved, it's still there. It's still there. You're still saved. You're still standing. You might be up against every kind of, every kind of obstacle, every kind of uh, obstruction, every kind of oppression, every kind of thorn. You might have a thorn in your side right now. Listen, God's grace is sufficient. And He is able. God is able. He is able. You might be praying for somebody right now and it seems like it's hopeless. You know what? There are some folks who probably thought I was hopeless. Might have been, been some folks who thought you were hopeless. Maybe you're praying for somebody right now and you think, God, what, what in the world got to happen? Don't give up. Don't turn back. Don't turn back. Don't stop. You might be looking around you right now and saying, what in the world am I going to do? Listen, don't. Just keep praying. Keep seeking the Lord. Don't lose your faith. And you'll see substance and you'll see evidence. You'll see proof. How many people here can put up a hand and say, I know God's real because I've seen Him work in my life. More than once. If you can't say that, find somebody who got their hand up and they'll, they'll encourage you. <laughs> sometimes we need to hear them stories. Sometimes we need to hear the testimonies of people that have been down and have looked up and God reached down and pulled them up. That's a good thing. 
because it's faith. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I want to tell you something. Sometimes you feel like just crawling in a closet. Come on. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Getting in the car and driving somewhere and leaving your cell phone at home. (laughs) Turn the Bluetooth off. Just get out somewhere for about six months. I don't know. That cube is looking pretty good right now. <laughs> we might go down for a little longer than 10 days. I don't know. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Amen. Why don't you stand with me as we close our service. My hope is built on nothing less. Than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. On Christ 